Hi, in this tutorial, we're going to teach you how to customize your gimbal to your preferred settings. As a quick reminder, before you do any of these customizations, make sure that you have your gimbal settings all backed up through the backup manager. All right, let's go ahead and connect. The first settings I'm going to tell you about is the RC settings, which is the joystick. Don't touch any of the settings right here on the top area and just scroll down to the settings right here. The main settings that we're going to be talking about is the speed. Here you can adjust the speed in which the joystick moves the gimbal. So right now it's set as default 20. You can see it's moving at a decent pace, but this might be too fast for some users. So I'm going to go ahead and put down the yaw to 10, click right. And remember, anytime you make any setting changes, always click right or else the gimbal won't know that you made the changes. All right, now that's a 10, and it's noticeably slower. You can do the same with the pitch as well. So I want the pitch quicker. Just click right, and now it's moving pretty fast. Leave all other settings besides speed at default. One more thing you can change on this page is right here, the command channel assignment. What this controls are the presses that happens with the joystick. The command channel assignments are mapped as low for profile one, mid for profile two, high for profile three. In other terms, low and high are single presses. Mid is when you hold down the joystick button. And here's a quick demonstration of what I mean. Currently, if I click single time, I will be put into profile one. So that would mean I am in lock mode. As you can see, it's locked. And if I push it again, it will switch over to three. And in profile three, you follow the yaw and the pitch. Hold down the joystick for about two seconds. I'll be in profile two, which is follow only, and lock the pitch is locked. All right, so those are the default settings. You can adjust these mapping though. There are a few things that you can do. So as here, you can go and see on the low, go down to something I personally like a lot, is the home position. What this does is it will return the gimbal to the home position facing forward. So go ahead and click that. And personally, I like to also change the high as home position as well because when I'm using the gimbal, I really can't remember which is low and which one is high. All right, make sure you click right. So right now I'm just gonna scroll down and when I tap it one time, it goes to home. So regardless of where it is, as long as I click it, it goes to home. I'm going to go over a few of the other settings that you can map, and if I don't mention any of the settings here, don't select them as it could be dangerous for your gimbal. All right, as the first ones are no action, that's safe, it would, nothing will happen. Use the profiles one through five is also safe to use. Then other safe ones are the home positions. The difference between these two home position and home position by shortest distance is that the home position by shortest distance will actually calculate which is the quickest route for the gimbal to spin back into that front position. Another setting that is nice to use is to rotate yaw plus 180 or minus 180 from current position. And what this one does is pretty much a selfie mode. As long as you're facing that way, I would hold down the button, let go, and automatically facing me. And if you want to go back, you push it one time, you go back to the home position. These are some of my personal favorite settings right here. All right, in the follow mode, we're going to go ahead and scroll down to the basic settings. These are the ones that we're going to be customizing. So dead band is basically the amount of wiggle room you're going to give yourself. So right now it's set at 8. That means that you're able to move left or right 8 degrees before the gimbal actually starts following you. So this gives you some jitter room so if you're running or you're walking, 
it doesn't, you don't accidentally rotate the gimbal. So if I move past that eight, it's gonna follow my motions. We suggest that you keep the dead band number above five so that it gives yourself just a little bit more wiggle room because if it's lower than five, a lot of times the gimbal will be too reactive and it'll move to every little motion you make. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and set it to 20. Click right. You can see that I have a lot more wiggle room. You can notice from the cord how much room I get before the gimbal starts moving. So this is pretty much like about 20 degrees before the gimbal starts moving. Personally, I find that seven or eight is a really good number depending on how quick you want your gimbal to react. Next, we're gonna talk about the expo curve. The greater the number, the slower it's gonna take the gimbal to reach your starting angle to your finish angle. So basically, the expo curve is the ramp speed. Just to show you what I mean, I'm gonna move the gimbal from facing front to my left. And you can see how slowly it catches up. So if you move the number higher, it's gonna take slower. The move. However, if the number is too low, the video sometimes turns out a little bit jerky. Personally, we like to suggest anywhere from 25 to 50 is a good bet. Next, we're gonna talk about speed. This is how fast the gimbal is gonna move. So let's go ahead and take a look at it if I set it low number first. So I'm doing the yaw. As you can see, it's inching along. And then now let's set it back to the 30. And it's moving at a good pace. So another way to look at it is the expo curve is the reaction time and the speed is the duration time. The last settings that we're gonna talk about changing in this is the LPF, which is the low pass filter. The low pass filter removes the small jitters that's caused by the gimbal itself. The higher the LPF number, the more smooth your gimbal is gonna move in that one direction that you're moving it. However, if it's too high, your gimbal might not move at all. So let me go and show you these examples. Let's go ahead and set the down at one. Just keep your eye on the camera and you can see it's kind of, it's not very smooth. It's kind of like pointing one direction, then the next, then the next, then the next. That's what happens when the numbers is too low. And then if I go ahead and set it something really high, you can see that it moves a little bit too slow, although it's very smooth now. You don't want to set the LPF too high as it can also cause some overshooting. As you can see when I set it to something like nine. So watch, I'm gonna go ahead and move here. You can see that gimbal's placing, it just keeps going. Generally, we suggest any number between four to six. Five is usually a very safe number to keep it at. You can keep it smooth and not jittering. In the service tab, you're gonna be able to control what the mode button does. To customize these, it's gonna be this section right here with the different clicks. So currently you can see that it says three clicks is use profile three. So if I click the mode button three times, it'll bring me to profile three. And profile three is follow yaw and pitch. So this is follow yaw and then pitch. Okay. And just like the joystick mapping, only map the mode button to the item that we talked about in this video. And here's a quick rundown of the things we can use for the mode button. Okay, we can use all the profiles, one through five. We can also use the Calibrate Gyro, which is actually currently set on long press. What Calibrate Gyro does for the mode button is a basic calibration of the gyroscope. Many times this will help when the camera is tilting in a certain direction. However, if you find that after you finish the basic calibration from this mode button, it doesn't work, follow the instructions that are listed in our 
six-point calibration video. All right, let's continue seeing what else we can select. Other things that's safe is actually you can turn the motors on and off. It's not much real use, but they are safe to do. The home position that we talked about earlier are safe for the mode button as well. And last but not least, it's the rotate yaw plus and minus 180 degrees from the current position are safe to use. And as you notice, five click is set up and start time-lapse motion. Currently, we have it as a one minute time lapse. What you can do is if you scroll down to this section right here where it says time lapse parameters, this is where you can increase the duration of the time lapse. All right, currently it's set at 60 seconds. You can actually go all the way up to 99,999 seconds. That's currently the max you can set it at, which is roughly about 28 hours. So depending on what you're filming, you can set your time lapse to any time you want. And as a reminder, if there are any settings that are not covered in these tutorials, don't change them as you could permanently damage your gimbals. And that's it for this tutorial. If you want to learn more, feel free to watch our other videos.